So who of you have been fundraising in emergencies? Show of hands. Good. Everyone. So that means a lot of experience and a lot of debate, hopefully. So who is in favor of raising money for emergencies in developed economies? And against? Ah, we are a bit less, but at least we are not only us, Andrew. <laughs> So, let's focus on two examples we've chosen for the debate in developed economies. Hurricane Katrina. 1,863 people were killed during Hurricane Katrina. And in the US itself, over 3.5 billion was raised. I'm not saying in the debate, even from my side, and I think Andrew is with me on this, as we are the against bit here, um, that the Americans should not have raised money for all the people affected in America, the US. Not saying that. As I'm not saying, for Japan, the Japanese people gave generously, you'll see in a minute, to refresh your mind. But we are saying the Japanese people should not have raised any money for people affected in Katrina. That is our debate. Just on your point, one of the things the American Red Cross did do is it did call out to other national societies quietly and say, actually, we can't cope. This is such a big disaster. We need your help. We need your help around logistics. We are doing an amazing job, but actually this is massive, even for the American Red Cross, who is uh, such an incredibly amazing organization. So again, I think just an important context is, actually, Hurricane Katrina was a massive thing. Um, and I'm sure we remember, you know, and all of the images yeah. and the stories yeah, 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 on the yeah, newspaper. Yeah. Do you really believe that the people that gave to Hurricane Katrina in the UK were choosing between giving to Hurricane Katrina or to Japan and choosing to give to another charitable activity like giving to Africa? Is that heart of heart? Do you believe none of those donors were giving because they were emotionally moved and they would have spent their money on an iPod or they were going to give it to this appeal? I think the emergencies are always about emotions, but it doesn't mean that the charity does not have a certain point of a responsibility to explain to the donor, because the donor doesn't know where the money is going to be spent on. You know, we can explain to donors and tell them, you know, that this is the situation, but there's a, we do not even do that. We just say, emergency, now here's the number, give now. And maybe at the time if we see there's so many more emergencies, so many more disasters in developing countries, so many people dying, not getting even to their fifth birthday because they're malnourished, shouldn't we as charities at least explain to our donors that there is a choice? When I saw the topic of this, I thought, well, there is no debate. If people need help, we give them help. Japan authorities, at the time it was happening, said to the world, to all of us, they did not need international aid. They did not want money, and especially not from the US. The message from the Red Cross to everyone was, actually, we welcome we're not looking for your funds, but we welcome your funds. Because and I think they're culturally not capable of saying no. But they culturally are not, uh, they're not used to asking. <laughs> no, because, and they don't even need it. They specifically said, we do not want it. It's nearly always a very personal choice about what they want to donate to. Who are we to turn around and say to them, we're not going to take your money for this emergency. Well, I don't think we are actually telling the donors what the actual situation is. I wish we were, because that is my whole point. We do not tell them it is tragic. Japan didn't want the money. You know, they don't need it. They are a ver the third richest economy. They're more than capable of solving their own problems, but we have this, this, and this. There was no appeal open at the Red Cross. There was no appeal open at Oxfam or UNICEF. People were giving and were saying, I'm giving to Japan who haven't opened an appeal, but I'm still giving. What, do you propose we close down all fundraising channels until we can... But there are organizations out there that, for example, UNICEF UK did not open. The, the need is bigger in the Horn than it is in Japan for the situation. I mean, certainly for us, even on Haiti, we got to a point where we had raised as much money that we programmatically needed, and at which point 
the bounce back will be basically we're full this money will be used for our emergency work around around the world kind of are you are you happy with that this is being driven by media that is causing a tsunami yes. of its own at the <laughs> floodgates of giving people wanting to give sorry uh, people wanting to give um, and they're calling and most charities are trying to deal with it just deal with it having the kind of discussion that you talk about in terms of, you've got to remember, someone's sitting in front of the television, they're watching that, they're horrified, they want to react, they're hum anything that's human in them is saying, I have to do something. The quickest thing is to you know, hit the donate button or call, get online. Um, many of them, you don't have an opportunity to talk to these people. So having that rational discussion, like you can in a hospital where someone wants to give to the clown program that's fully subscribed and saying, well, our need is really over here. It's almost impossible to make that happen at that point in time. The reason we exist is to facilitate the donor. It's their wishes exactly. that we're putting into action. So how can you say all of this? And the other thing is, what is the value of a life in the US compared to somebody in, in Thailand or in, or in Japan? It's still a life that we are concerned about and we're responding when we see this. And yes, it's driven by media, but, 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 but it becomes an ethical question. I think, honestly, if you go onto the street and you go and you say, you're giving to Japan in the UK, you're giving to Japan, do you know your money is going to buy refrigerators and other stuff? The donor is not aware of it. I think it comes down to how, how our donors understand how the money is spent and, and how, how all donations are spent, regardless of what charity and regardless what the cause, how that, act, how that money is spent. And, and I, I think if people knew how the money is spent, then we're giving them the option. But I really, I really truly don't believe, and I'm probably going to get fired, um, <laughs> <laughs> that the general public know how that money is used. The organization I work for, we are a media-driven uh, organization which does humanitarian relief all over the world, and we are first responders in disasters. So the other side of the coin is, where is the proof of performance? And we do that on television on a regular basis all over the world in, in about 40, 45 languages. Where the money goes, I think, is, is a broader question that applies to anything we do. It, it wouldn't be about Japan. It could be about working in the Horn of Africa or Southeast Asia or anywhere. And, and that's a constant issue and a challenge for us. I, I think. It, it seemed to be suggested that there's a choice between whether it's Japan or whether it's London bombings or Katrina and, and some of the potentially more worthy or more vulnerable or poorer or however you're going to quantify it causes. I think a good example just from the Red Cross perspective is that for Japan, absolutely in solidarity, because there was a humanitarian need, we were raising money supporting the Japanese Red Cross. But we were purely a receptacle. We did not push that appeal. Isn't there a duty of care to the public to let them give? Is there anyone from Save the Children UK by any chance? Mm -hmm. Because I think you did, I, mean, I wasn't in the UK, um, but I think you did a fabulous job in creating the media around the horn, which was huge in the UK. It, unfortunately, I think it's, it, fortunately, it spread to other Commonwealth English speaking uh, markets, but not outside of that. So that compassion, that, that need, it's, 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 yeah, if, if you've got wall-to-wall -wall TV coverage, so, you know, you'd so have to have a very hard heart not, not to react to that. Um, whereas, you know, these forgotten emergencies, you know, a lot of maybe more time and even resources should be spent by charities um, influencing, advocating media to um, up their game. But don't is ever going to give equally to the things that we think are important. It's not the role of fundraisers to get donors to give un uh, kind of unrestricted donations to our organizations so that we can genuinely choose to allocate those donations to the things that we think are most important. It's our job to tell the story. If the story is not being told about Pakistan, then that's our fault. We're yes. there. Competition. This is the idea that uh, charities compete with each other to raise funds. I want to be out first because if I have the number and I will be in the media, I will get more donors. We're meant to be raising more money. If we all sat there and said, oh, it's okay, we'll all work together and don't worry and everybody's really lovely, 
then we're not going to raise as much. I, I know what you're saying, but businesses are competitive because they get better. We should be competitive so we get better at what we do, surely. To be really honest, in fundraisers, we are doing it because, of course, we are there for the mission. And have, but we're looking, are they getting out earlier? Should we, da, da, da? You know, this is the competition thing. In, you know, are we still number one or two? Or are we, how many did you get? We can phone, we can, you know. So are we led by the competition to go out there and fundraise? You know, part of it, to be you know, really honest. Um, and is that a good thing or not? When you have mission drift, then you get into real trouble. And eventually that will come back after 27 years <laughs> of watching this. It will yeah. come back and invite you. I mean, do we raise as much as we need as an organization based on the added value that we can bring to alleviate the suffering? Or do we raise as much as we can? And then we will see you know, what we can, how can we best spend the money? Now, and I think that is a choice. Now, I work for MSF, and we have a very radical needs-based approach. It took us to stop accepting money for the tsunami, not to raise money for Japan, not because they are developer, developing countries, more based on the kind of the needs approach. My biggest question is, who gets to decide on the need? I work at a media agency across a wide number of charities. And the audiences that they're going for are almost the same. Little differences, but you're going for the same audience every time. And with emergencies, we do see a very different audience responding. And so it is almost that getting there first, because they are new donors. So are we being led by our donors? Because the donors want to give, we should just accept it. This is what I've heard a lot. Philanthropy is donor-driven. So we have to accommodate, um, as someone said earlier, we have to accommodate the donor's wishes. We maybe have to do a better, a better job on our websites and so on of identifying where the most need is so that helps them in their decision making. But if the donor is moved to give to that cause, and a lot of people that gave in the case of Haiti or, or Japan were giving um, because they had some connection with those countries as well. I saw some fairly interesting shifts of, of countries that the money was coming from in, in those cases. So you, you need to allow them. And if you don't have, um, you're not going to be able to spend the money because you aren't able to deliver the programs or you don't have the programs, then you should be telling them that you need to be going to this organization that can use this money appropriately. Who of, who of us actually tell them we have enough and you should go somewhere else. Except I only know MSF Sir. as the, the example. We, we will say, I'm with Caritas, and we will say when our appeal has met its goal. So there is a possibility to you know, help donors understand what it is we are actually doing. Because I honestly think, and I've done quite a number of donor surveys, and you know, what do you think? And they have actually no clue. And it's, it's, it's part is us, because we should educate them better and help them better. But a lot of it is just, you know, the Pavlov rector, oh, it's a, just give.